In this tutorial, we're going to make letter paper, in the style Princess Toadstool uses, in Super Mario Bros. 3. If you haven't already, download the latest version of NESXT, and open it. You'll see this view. The big canvas represents one screen. The small canvas is the tile set. Let's double-click a tile to open the char editor. If I draw in the first tile, you'll see the whole screen repeats the pattern. This is because it's been pre-filled with this tile. Let's keep this tile empty, delete, and move to the next tile instead. That's better. Some of the most useful tiles to have in the set are ones with a single color. Let's use the bucket. Hold Ctrl and click in the tile. It became white because white is selected in our chosen subpalette. Undo. You can also use the pen or bucket to increment or decrement color. Hold Shift, Ctrl, and click to increment. Hold Shift, Alt, and Ctrl to decrement. This matches the colors in your sub palette. Now, let's build a ramp of fill colors. I use the increment method to fill one tile after another. Now, let's pick some royal colors. I click on the sub palette color I want to change. Then I pick a color from the big system palette. As I change the colors, you'll see that the patterns in the tile set changes, also. Same when I choose another subpalette. The tiles only contain pattern data, and you use the subpalettes to dress them in color. The current pattern and current subpalette is what goes when placed on screen. To lay out our princely letter, I think it's best to use some guiding grids. For this task, I prefer the 4 times grid, together with the 1 tile grid. Now, I'm going to draw the shadow under the paper first, using a box selection. I hold shift, left click, and drag. Then, I press F to fill with the current tile. I then move the selection box one step top left, by holding shift, right clicking within it, and then I drag it into place. Then, select the tile we want for paper, and press F to fill. Now, we'll make the borders with the pink tile. Again, make a box selection on the screen, select the tile, and press F. We can repeat this for all the edges. Or, we can clone two edges to their other sides. To clone a selection, hold Ctrl plus Alt, right-click, and drag into place. You'll see the little C icon in the corner of the selection. This is starting to look like something, if a little simple. Time to make an actual pattern for the border. I pick white from the palette swatch, and then make two diagonal lines. Using the bucket, with the control key down, I fill in either side. There's still some things that could look nicer, especially in these two corners. Since I changed the pink tile into a stripe, I want to move it out of my collection of filled-in tiles. Right-click and drag it to another location. The underlying table of the screen, which tells which tiles go where, will automatically repair itself to match. Now let's fill in that pink tile again, in case it'll come in handy later. I copy the stripe pattern over to the next tile space, then I add a little corner to the top left to make its pattern repeat. I clone this tile once more. This time, I'm only going to keep the top left pixel, so, I right-click the white field to quickly sample that color. Then, I control-click the stripe to overpaint it. And there I place it. At this point, I realized I might as well use the tile with both the strip and the dot on all the regular border tiles too. This will make the stripes look uniform. One easy way to do it is to simply paste the tile with the dot over to the tile that's already in use around the paper edges. This way we don't need to lay the tile out again. Of course, this means we've created a duplicate. Duplicates can automatically be detected or deleted, respectively, with these two actions. But just to be thorough, I'm going to show the other common approach too. I undo the paste, then reselect the tile I want to use, and fill all the edges I want covered with it. To check my work, I use this button in the View Toolbox. When down, we only see the currently selected tiles from the tile set on screen. It looks fine, but the selection box on screen is a bit in the way, so I deselect it with Ctrl, Shift, and A. In this mode, you can click on any tile, or even left-click drag around to quickly get an estimate of their use on screen. Just like you can use menu actions to find or delete duplicates, you can also find or delete and use tiles automatically. Let's use the Find action to show what it looks like. Every unused tile gets an all sides selection box around them. We can then press Delete to manually delete them. Or, you can handpick tiles to clear by control clicking them one by one. With all that covered, it's time to move on. 
Let's put a cute stamp in the corner, where a signature might go. I'm going for a heart. For this, I think the 2 times grid will help placing it. I'm going to use the 2 by 2 edit mode. Click on this button. You can also press Shift plus C. 2 by 2 tiles that go together is traditionally a very common approach for NES graphics. Now, I want to fill these 4 tiles with paper white. A quicker way to pick color is using keys 1, 2, 3, and 4, which relates to the 4 colors in the active sub palette. 4 is white in our case. I then hold Ctrl and drag the bucket around. It will fill on a per tile basis. Now I'll try to draw the heart. And, of course, the first try didn't come out nicely. It's always possible to salvage a bad silhouette by reshaping it, but just to show a bit more of my workflow thoughts. I'm going to erase it, and start over. So, at this point, I sample, that is, right-click, the color I want to erase with, and then start doing just that. You can erase with the pen, per pixel, or by dragging the bucket around, holding control. When drawing a first rough silhouette, it can sometimes help to use a brush instead of a pen. I click the brush button. By default, a brush is 2 by 2 pixels. I want to modify it to something in between though. The command is Shift F4 to break out the brush mask editor, but here's a secret shortcut. I right click the brush button. A 2 by 1 shape can help the brush stroke feel more dynamic. And at this scale, it provides a nice compromise between stability and precision. I make broad strokes first, just to get something to work with. Once it starts forming, I toggle back to the pen to chisel out some more definition. I probably should have placed the tiles on the screen by now to get a better view. All of the selection on the tile set got placed in one click. Sometimes, I place tiles before I even draw on them. And there it is. There's just a few more things I should mention before ending. For example, let's say I wasn't happy with how the heart was placed within the tiles. I can then nudge the pattern. I use the WAST keys or arrow keys to nudge it around. Likewise you can also move selections into another place on the screen canvas. Make your selection, right-click in it, and drag. And I do it again, to move the letter one step to the right. Lastly, I should mention that the backdrop color on the NES is shared between sub-palettes. That's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.